Many thanks for staying with us here on News. There's to some more stories now. And the New Patriotic Party has refuted claims by the ruling NDC of uh, scheming to disenfranchise supporters of the latter in a skewed attempt to win power at all costs in the November poll. Speaking on joining News political program Minority Caucus, a deputy communications director of the NPP, Anthony Cabo, says what the NPP seeks to do is to ensure that no ghost names appear in the register. Apart from the donations and uh, the fundraising activities that the, the party is engaged in, the party has begun in earnest with some door-to-door -door activity uh, around the country. And this is beginning to cause some fear and panic in the NDC. We heard Koku screaming and making all sorts of accusations. What, what, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, Perry, um, it's very interesting. I've also been following the debate. I think that so far the MPP is activating its polling station and grassroots network across the country. And um, those who hitherto thought that the party didn't exist are beginning to get knock-ups on their doors and uh, they are beginning to engage at the local level and the people, in fact, in the rural areas are beginning to listen to the message of the MPP. And I think that is what has pushed our president to, uh, you know, be trotting across the regions, indeed trying to taunt some of um, his uh, very modest achievements. Unfortunately, it is sending a very uh, a strong signal to our opponents clearly that the MPP is ready for change. We are no more going to be sitting in the big cities. We are going to walk in the villages, in the rural areas. And the party is gradually, you know, building momentum towards this election. And I think that we must commend the constituency executives, electoral area coordinators, police station executives, and all the national officers who are all over the country ensuring, and of course our hardworking regional officers as well, you know, for ensuring that they are bringing back some life into the party. We need to close our ranks. We need to continue to be united. We need to stand together so we can push the elephant back into the Flagstaff House and uh, begin to implement some of our very sterling uh, ideas and policies which we have been uh, uh, yearning to, 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 to implement, given the opportunity to lead. So I think that it has been very encouraging. I've heard the NDC talking about the fact that in Ashanti region, the MPP is working assiduously to, <laughs> uh, you know, to, uh, to, to sort of uh, disenfranchise and to eliminate people from the register. I found it very bizarre. Look. Does the MPP have that power? I mean, first of all, the MPP is not the electoral commission. First of all, secondly, the MPP doesn't have the power to collate names. What we are doing is making sure that the register at every polling station is audited. We want to be sure that human beings are on this register. And that is one of the reasons that is backing our call for a validation. Because if 30 people are registered at Joy News Police Station, we expect that during the validation, we expect 30 people to come and validate their existence, just like it is being done in the government sector to clean up the payroll. Ask yourself, how has this government or successive governments been able to clean up the payroll? They have introduced what they call a biometric system, and workers, teachers, across the country are supposed to come to Accra or a regional center and validate, validate themselves, themselves so that we can, can reduce paid. the number of ghost names in, 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 in our payroll yeah. system. It's the same thinking, it's the same processes that are going on in respect of the uh, voter register. And we are calling for a validation of this register. Unfortunately, we are getting all sorts of uh, semantic meanings of the word validation, exhibition, and there's a huge confusion. We hope that IPAC and the Electoral Commission would be able to resolve this. What has been bizarre is the fact that on the face of the record, documents written by the VCRE CRAP committee is now being read to members of the committee, and they are jumping all over radio stations, running away from their own ink. We didn't write that. The MPP came out to say, we uphold the recommendations of the committee. We expect the Electoral Commission to take steps to take on board some of these committee recommendations. And we are not seeing that. All of a sudden, people are suddenly having to do a U-turn on these matters. But we will continue to push. 
we will continue to encourage our party officers at the polling station to audit the register on the ground. They know the people they live with. They know every other person who turns up on the day of voting to go and vote. And so it's important that we know these voters. And it is critical. So if anybody in the NDC, like the likes of Koko and Nidoho, <laughs> can, they can shout for how long they want to shout. We'll And just before we wrap up your news desk this morning, there's this very interesting story I want to share with you. It has to do uh, with a Catholic priest, a priest for that matter. So, a juvenile court in Accra, well, on Wednesday, April 20, 2016, commends the hearing of a case in which a Catholic reverend father stands accused of being the father of a six-month-old boy whom he's alleged to have abandoned. 24-year-old Josephine Ganyame, who filed this suit, is accusing the Cameroonian Catholic priest and diplomat based in Ghana of neglecting responsibility towards a six-month-old child he allegedly fathered. Josephine says she wants the Reverend Father to subject himself to a paternity test to determine the father of the baby, among other reliefs. I mean, host of Journeys Interactive, Ben is joining me now in studio with a lot more on this very interesting story. So, Ben, thanks for joining us. No, You're welcome. So th let's talk about this Reverend Father. I mean, how is the Reverend Father accused of fathering a child, really? Well, <laughs> the Reverend Father says, well, he has had some form of sexual relationship with this lady, but... Uh, wait, wait, Reverend Father? Yes, who sworn okay. an oath of celibacy says... Exactly. Yes, but I'm not to judge him, so let's go on. He says he's had sexual relationships with the lady, but he's not the father of the child, and his reason is mm. um, he uses a condom any time he has sex oh. with the lady. Okay, wait. So he's a Reverend Father. Yes. He has sworn an oath of celibacy. Yes. And now he's been accused of fathering, of impregnating this lady, mm -hmm. that's first and foremost, mm -hmm. and then fathering a child, with, a child he's abandoning at this yes. point in time. I, I think he's been very honorable here. He has agreed to have a sexual relationship with the lady, but he says... On a number of occasions. On a number of occasions. With, but with condoms. With a condom, so he can't <laughs> father the child. That's what he says. So he says, okay, my bad, I broke my oath, but I'm not the father of this child. Okay. Do we know his whereabouts now? I don't know. We don't know. Okay. Don't know. All right. But Interest. the case is still in court. I'm sure so. you have a lot of details. I can yes. see that picture right yes. behind you. Yes. I'm sure There's you have a lot, a lot of, comment of comments on this very on issue. On social media. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's how I, I, I'll end uh, <laughs> joining his desk here on the Journey Channel Lord Multi TV. My name is Kwabna Chencha Inubwati. But like you just heard, Ben is everybody will be bringing a lot more comments on that very interesting story of uh, a Reverend Father who has sworn an oath of celibacy, uh, being accused of uh, abandoning a baby, his own baby. Well, his explanation, we are told, is that uh, he uses a condom each time he engages in that act. Well, Benis has a lot more when she joins you. We join this interactive. But my name is Kwabna Chencha I need to wrap up at this point. Remember to visit myjoinline.com for a lot more news. Up next, up next is Join this interactive with Benis Abubaid. Many thanks for your company. <laughs>